Hello guys, good evening everyone, uh, welcome to the game of the day of round number 8 of the Grenke Chess Classic. This is Pepe Cuenca from Spain and we are pretty sad in Chess 24 because Grenke Chess Classic is coming to an end tomorrow, last round, round number 9. Remember guys, you can follow all the action in Chess 24 with English and Spanish commentary. But now we have to analyze another amazing game that had just happened between Peter Schwittler and 8 times Russian champion and one of the best players in the world, an amazing person as well, and uh, Magnus Carlsen, the current world champion. So let's cut the nonsense and start analyzing what happened in the 64 squares between these two superstars. So e4 was chosen by Peter Svidal and Magnus Carlsen replied with c5, his Sicilian defense. You guys know that he's been using this defense in the last months with a lot of success. Knight f3, knight, f6, knight c6, sorry. And as you guys know, he's trying to go for the pelican. So there are different ways to stop or to avoid the uh, pelican. One of them is uh, the Rosolimo that comes after bishop b5 and uh, the other way is to play knight c3. And this was the option chosen by Peter Swidler. Of course, after d4, cd, uh, knight f6, knight c3, Magnus probably would have gone for the pelican after e5. So knight c3 was played by Peter Svitler and here there are a lot of alternatives available for black. You can play d6, g6, going for the accelerated dragon, e6, knight f6 and the move that Magnus chose, e5. Of course Magnus is saying, you know what, now you're not going to be able to play d4. Of course it has some handicaps and one of them is that the bishop now on c4 is perfectly placed because if it's targeting the f7 pawn. So bishop c4 and now bishop e7, maybe some of you at home would be saying, come on, stupid Spanish guy, Spanish asshole, why not to go knight f6 here? Because after knight g5, black has almost to resign here in this position. Only move is d5 sacrificing already a pawn and then this doesn't look good. So that's why bishop e7 is played in these positions, d3, d6 and here there are two main uh, lines. One of them is the normal move, short castle. Peter Swidler didn't go for that. After short castle, knight f6, for example, knight g5 is played a lot. And then after short castle, Facundo to f4. And the other line, the other main line is was Peter Swidler played, knight g2. This knight is coming to e3, where controls this really important square d5. So knight f6 was played by Magnus Carlsen, knight f1, and here, Magnus doesn't go for the main line. The main line goes after bishop g4, forcing Facundo to go to f3 and then bishop e6. But instead, Magnus chooses this knight d7 idea. Of course, he's trying to put this knight on b6 and then trying to capture this guy on c4, which is by far the best piece for white. Peter Svitler plays knight d5 in order to stop knight b6 here. For, for example, if white goes knight e3 after knight b6, bishop b3 running away, then there's knight d4, for example, and then black's gonna get the bishop pair, and then this is a little, uh, little bit better maybe uh, for black, right? Because you got the bishop pair, so this is always good news. So that's why knight d5 was played here by Peter Svitler, knight b6, and then knight takes b6. A takes b6, and in this position, Peter went for c3. And then, why to go c3 in this position? It doesn't look necessary, at least, right? Why not to continue with knight e3 here, here in this position? Well, there was a positional threat, uh, or tactical threat, which was the move b5. And then, white is not able to take this pawn on b5, because there's, boom, queen, not queen b6, but instead, queen a5, check and then winning the bishop on b5 and white has to resign and go and take a shower so that's why uh, Peter went for c3 here now b5 so if is of course stupid because you just take the pawn on b5 there's no check on a5 so no point to go of b5 here so that's why Magnus went for short castle in these types of structures it's interesting to exchange or to trade this dark squares bishops for the black prey right right because this bishop you know it uh, it crashes with the pawns, so that's why it doesn't enjoy good diagonal. So that's why it's so interesting to trade to trade it. But why not to go bishop g5 straight away? Because there is queen h5, boom, winning the game on the spot. There is a double threat on f7 and on g5, and basically black has to resign in this position. So that's why short castle was played by Magnus Carlsen. Finally, 93 by Peter Svidler, and then 
bishop g5 activating activating sorry this guy uh, in a better diagonal so here short castle was played by peter Svitler and then king h8 by magnus magnus <laughs> magnus Carlsen, who is ready to strike in the center with the move f5 sending facundo to the action here um here peter Svitler went for a3 and then seeing what happened in the game in a few moves maybe this was not so uh, good at this point maybe it was better to go to to go for knight d5 let's say bishop c1 rook c1 or even queen c1 let's say f5 and the engine is happy with the move f3 i know it's kind of hard to go for these lines with the white pieces because black can uh, close the center or the position with f4 and then Black's attacking uh, freely on the king side, and then it's not so clear how you're gonna create counterplay on the queen side. The engines are happy with this position. The engines suggest something like a3, b4, but it looks to me it, it's a little bit slow, and then it's really easy to think that you can uh, end up worse in this position with the white pieces, and actually it's not, uh, it's not good to just to protect your king, right? So that's why a3 was played by Peter Spittler and then Magnus, boom, f5. And then Peter took on f5, trying to simplify the position again. Knight d5 was also suggested by the engines, but then here black has a lot of interesting alternatives. You can close the position with f4 and then after f3, this, is, this bishop in many lines can be sacrificed on g3 because there is later a queen coming to h4. But also, trading this bishop on c1 is actually a good idea. Rook c1 and then f4 in the same way. And then this looks nice for black as well. But instead, Peter took on f5, then bishop takes c1, rook takes c1, bishop f5, e takes f5, and then this is the key of the position. Boom, d5, closing this bishop. This bishop has to go back to a2, and now Magnus just takes this pawn on f5. And even though the engines are saying that this position is more or less equal, it's really easy to think. Or at least, it's really much easier to play this position with the black pieces. You have a lot of space, and then you just want to continue with queen d6, rook f8, and then you're enjoying such a nice center, which makes your position really, really easy to play. The engine here was suggesting something like queen b3, which doesn't look natural to me, because after the move 97, I actually don't know what are you doing here with the queen and the bishop, and basically, black wants to do the same stuff. Queen d6, rook f8, and then enjoy life, then go for a drink, maybe a mojito or something, and then life is good with such a nice center, right? So after rook f5, uh, Peter went for this plan, queen g4 attacking the rook on f5, rook f6, and then f4, trying to eliminate at least some pawns from Magnus' center. But the point is, after e takes f4, he didn't see a really strong uh, continuation from Magnus Carlsen. Of course, not good now to take on f4. Why? Because there is knight e5 intermediate move attacking the queen. And then after queen g3, let's say, there's rook f4, queen f4, and boom, knight takes e3. And basically, white has to resign. So that's why Peter Smith thought, all right, it's, that's not a problem. So I'm gonna go queen g5 and then I double attack on d5 and on f4. And the point is, if you now play d4, now it's possible to take on f4 because there's no knight e5 and then this diagonal uh, gets open for this little monster on a2 that was sleepy but now it's ready to go for party, right, on that diagonal. But instead, Magnus had a really strong move and of course he saw it because he's seen everything in the last tournaments. He's playing like God. And then he goes for queen f8. It's a really strong move, and probably Peter Svitlet missed this continuation. The point is, you can't really take with the bishop, because there's rook f5 with a double attack winning the game on the spot. So, why the force to take the pawn with the queen on d5? And then after the move, rook d8, actually, white's position, it's a bit annoying, because now you have another problem, which is the pawn on d3. The engines were suggesting here in this position to sacrifice that pawn with the move queen g5. But after the move, rook takes e3, black's a pawn up. Of course, there is some compensation due to this little monster here from b1, uh, which is a nice piece, but still, a pawn is a pawn, as un Uncle Jan Gustafsson says. So, 
Here, Peter Svitla wanted to protect this pawn, and then he went for queen f3. Queen e4 runs into rook e8 here in this position, and then there's no nice square for this queen. If you go to d5, there's rook f5. If you go to f3, there's knight e5, or even rook e3, and then position doesn't look good. That's why Peter went for queen f3. Magnus jumps with his beautiful corsel, knight e5, attacking the queen, attacking the pawn. Now, Peter went for queen e4, hoping Magnus uh, to take on d3, but actually that's not the best move. And Magnus went for knight g4, aiming to go to e3, where this knight is extremely well placed. On e3, this knight, nobody can kick this knight from there. And then you're putting pressure on g2 and attacking the rook on f1. If black takes on d3, then after the move, rook c to d1, let's say knight takes b2, Bishop b1, threatening checkmate on h7, g6, only move, and then rook d8, queen d8, and then this strong move, queen e2, attacking this knight, forcing this knight to go to a4 to the corner, which is where it's punished. And there's rook d1, really strong move. Now this queen is coming either to c4 or to e5. This bishop on a2 is enjoying a fantastic diagonal, and actually this is a much better position for the white player. So that's why Magnus went for knight g4 here, and the position is already extremely difficult for Peter. And I don't know how Magnus is doing uh, this so easily. You know, after 20 moves, he's uh, putting a lot of pressure on one of the best players in the world. And it's actually not so clear where uh, Peter made the mistake. Probably this a3 was not so good, but so little mistakes that after that, you know, Magnus is putting a lot, a lot of pressure. So rook c to e1 was played by Peter, bringing this rook to an open file, and now knight e3 attacking this rook on f1. So Peter goes to f2, and then another good move by Magnus Carlsen, sacrificing another pawn. He goes for rook e8. Forcing this queen to take on b7, and now he goes for the aggressive and attacking move g5. Introducing a lot of nasty and attacking ideas. He wants to go g4, and then imagine this queen on h6. A queen on h6 and a pawn on g4 would be threatening some g3, which would be almost made. And this is extremely hard to play for the white player. You know, even the engines are suggesting here queen f3. Who's gonna play queen f3 there in that position? That runs into g4, losing another tempo. So, uh, Peter here went for rook f to e2. And now Magnus continues with g4, introducing g3 ideas, but also f3 ideas. If, for example, white goes d4 in this position, f3 would be winning already on the spot. But, and some of you at home could be saying, come on, Pepe. Rook takes e3 and white is a piece up. But then, who solves the problem all the time? Fakum! F2 check, and then you're gonna take this rook on e1, and white has to resign. So that's why Peter, after g4, decided to go back to f2. And here Magnus goes for queen h6. And Magnus is threatening already this move g3. For example, let's say again, after d4, g3 just wins. Takes, takes, rook takes f6, and queen h2. And white has to resign. So that's why in this position, Peter Spittler went for queen c7. Queen c7, which protects this g3 square. So now Magnus realizes, all right, if I could just play g3 followed by knight g4 in good conditions, I would be winning the game on the spot, right? Let's say g3, h takes. If I could play knight g4 and then threaten checkmate on h2 and the rook on f2, I would be winning. But the problem is, of course, the rook on e8 is hanging and then black loses. So that's why Magnus, after the move queen c7, he plays the humble but effective move rook e to f8, which is threatening g3 followed by knight g4. Actually, white can't do anything about that. Let's say again, same move, d4, g3 takes knight g4 and then white has to resign. So Peter, after rook e to f8, he went for the move h3 in a desperate situation. Magnus just took on, h, on h3, opening the g-file. Peter here went for g3 and uh, if white takes on h3, let's say, takes here, rook g6, king h2, there is this beautiful finish, boom, ra -da 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 -da. queen h3, king takes and rook h6 and this is checkmate. So Peter, in a nice gesture, he continued playing and he allowed Magnus to check to checkmate him. So g3 was played, f takes, rook f6, h2 check, only move king h1, and Magnus 
gives checkmate with a pawn on g2. What a nice game by the world champion Magnus Carlsen. Actually, I don't know how uh, he uh, puts pressure so easily on his opponents. I mean, we are talking about Peter Svidler, eight times Russian champion, one of the best players in the world. But Magnus is playing an amazing chess. He has won like four out of five games with the black pieces in this tournament. Amazing performance. Again, he's getting closer to his pick. He's now above 28, 70 uh, ELO points. What, a, what an amazing performance. So guys, it's been a pleasure for me to analyze this game for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this game and see you tomorrow in the next video, in the last game of the day video for Green Chess Classic. So have a good evening and then enjoy with all your family members, friends, etc. And remember, if you drink, don't drive. Bye bye guys. Sayonara baby. Boom, 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 boom.